Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to episode 61 of the podcast. And today I'm talking about my recent vacation with my son, James, and just doing a general little check-in post as I work on a new little project. So yeah, I'm feeling a little tired this week. I'll be completely honest. I almost skipped the podcast. Um, I tried recording it last night and I was just too tired and I had to delete basically three different versions <laughs> of this podcast in a row. And that usually is enough to tell you there's a problem going on. This isn't working. So yeah, it almost didn't happen, but I woke up this morning feeling a lot better. And yeah, I just really wanted to share with you what's going on and what I'm working on today. Uh, and just to let you know, our podcasts always have video now too. So if you would like to also see what I'm working on, then come and check out the video at leahday.com slash episode 61. And that's where you can find it. And you'd also find photos of the different things that I mentioned in the podcast as well. So what am I working on? I am taking on a new craft. I have decided to learn watercolor. And I'll be honest, uh, of all the different types of paint, you know, oil paints never appeal to me because I don't like the smell and I don't like to have to clean them up with, um, I think you have to clean them up with mineral spirits um, or turpentine, that, that was never something that I was interested in. But I usually, when I did any painting at all, I would usually play with acrylics because I, I watercolors always seemed really, really tough. Like that was just, you know, that sounds really hard to be able to control that. But then I started learning about the beautiful effects that you can get and almost like the look of a batik, solid reading batik fabric. And I started getting curious and, you know, curiosity, where does that lead? It leads you to wanting to try it. So that's what I've been doing. And I, you know, I actually picked up, you know, like I started with James's cheapo um, kid set of watercolors, played with that for a little bit, started to get some interesting effects and then went to the hobby store and started looking at things and just checking stuff out. And there was a good sale going on. So grabbed a bunch of paints and I have just been really enjoying this exploration. And there is nothing really to this. Like I'm not planning on becoming a watercolor teacher or anything like that, or even selling watercolors. It's just, I think really good to explore different crafts and see how they intersect and overlap. And uh, my plan is to maybe figure out how to turn my, basically these are kind of um, washes, they're kind of modeled washes that I'm creating with the watercolor and they're really pretty. So it's like, uh, I'll take purples and mix multiple colors of purple together and they kind of create that modeled batik look. I wanna figure out a way of turning that into fabric and also using that in place of solids for my cheater cloth. So, you know, my I have, grandiose plans <laughs> for stuff to do with this. But for right now, I'm not putting any pressure on myself. I'm just enjoying the playtime more than anything else. That's really what I'm enjoying. And I've got some fabric samples actually where I'm trying to match up and create certain colors. So, you know, if I am working with like a pink, I'm trying to aim to get that pink uh, because that's the color that I really like. And, uh, and that's been fun too, trying to figure out how to blend colors and play with colors in a way that will get me what I want and the look that I'm going for. So yeah, this has just been a, a fun adventure. And the challenge in this has been not to get too obsessive with it to not you know get stuck on perfection and you know if something doesn't turn out right to you know be willing to throw more paint at it just the exact same way that I do with quilting you know throw more thread at it I say that all the time throw more paint at it with painting uh, and don't get too bent out of shape when things don't work out quite right uh, so yeah I, I'm really enjoying this I think this is a great direction and I think there's it's never a bad time to learn something new and challenge your brain. And I think sometimes we need that. Um, and I don't know why, but in particular right now, this is not actually the only craft that I've been experimenting with and challenging myself with. I'm also playing with freeform crochet. And this is my little piece. 
Now you can come and see a picture of this in the show notes. And I'll be honest, uh, I started making all of these little medallions and stuff a while ago, but I did not start actually putting them together and forming this fabric. It's basically a free form crochet yarn fabric until this week. And I was sitting there majorly crocheting on vacation <laughs> and had a great time with it. I find this really, really relaxing. So uh, I just spread this out flat on a pillow or I got a little um, foam board that I can pin into. So you wanna keep it flat. And I've also been pulling out my steamer to steam it occasionally. I've got a few lumps and bumps that aren't seeming to want to lay perfectly flat. Um, but yeah, you can steam it into submission and get it, get it going the way you want it to go. And I find this really relaxing. And you know, it's mostly, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle. You make something small, you know, this is just a small spiral shape with two colors, red and orange, and then try and figure out how that will fit. And if the colors are going well, or if you need to add another color to it, and then uh, stick it in there. And then, you know, I have my little um, tapestry needle, uh, my yarn needle and sew it together. And I'm leaving nice long thread tails so I can sew everything together. And it's just a matter of figure out where something fits and slide it into place and stitch it down and then keep on moving. So I'm kind of aiming for like a nice long piece because this will be most likely, this will be towards the bottom of my sweater. So this will be somewhere like right there. I really like that. I, I'm so excited about it. And I'm probably gonna do more freeform crochet um, even than this piece because as I'm working on it, I am also working on Mally the Maker. <laughs> so this is it. Uh, Mally the Maker is my fiction novel and I have printed it out. This is single spacing. So every time that I printed the galley up until this point, I've done big wide double spacing and it's taken up tons of paper and it's been like that thick. And this is the first time seeing it on single spacing and it feels like a real book. That's really, really exciting. It's, it's really starting to feel real now even more than it did before. And the really awesome thing was I was listening to it and working on the editing. So what I'm doing is uh, I basically taken the book and uploaded it into an app called Natural Reader, listening to it as I do things like watercolor paint, um, but mostly as I crochet. And James came in the room and he started listening too. And as I'm listening, I'm editing. So I have the gal you know, the, the um, text printed out next to me. And then if they, I hear something and like, oh, Mally doesn't need to say that, or maybe I need to edit that, or maybe I need to add a few more words and description, make that a little bit more clear. You know, I can kind of note that down and make it clear. And then, uh, you know, keep listening to the book and, you know, really kind of getting into the story. So James came in the room and started listening with me and then he picked up the galley and started reading ahead. We're like just sitting next to me uh, and you know, I'd have to take the galley from him and flip back to where I was and you know, make corrections and use my highlighter and stuff. And he was like, mom, I wanna read it. <laughs> that made me feel so good. Uh, so, you know, that um, my, my, my hope is that kids will enjoy this book. You know, that uh, 10, 11, 12 year olds and older will really enjoy it. And seeing how much James enjoyed it really made me feel great. And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the hope is that kids will like it, but really it's written for quilters. And uh, the funny thing about it, I've been, I'm thinking about adding one line in the book and I, I'm definitely gonna add it at some point. And it's gonna be, I'll never look at a ball of broken threads the same way again. And that, that's just a little sneak peek because the balls of book broken threads are the monsters in the book. And I love it. It's just, I cannot wait to share this with you guys. I really can't. It's just, you know, and I'm kind of listening to it and going, well, you know, how soon can we get this out there? You know, that kind of stuff. I still don't want to put a lot of pressure on myself to set a date, you know, a hardcore date for publishing because then that will, I don't know, it'll start to feel like gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And uh, it'll be a lot less, um, how can I say it? I won't feel like I can take my time as much as I've been feeling like up to this point. 
Uh, and I, you know, I, I just kind of am resistant on the setting a deadline thing right now. Uh, and also we've got a lot of other things going on. I just really want to take my time and enjoy this process. And I still have layout to do, you know, I need to lay out the book. Uh, and, you know, it might not seem like a text-based book has a lot of formatting, but it actually does. There's actually a lot in a text-based book that we kind of take for granted. And now that I've been looking at that and paying more attention to that, I'm starting to see so much more of that side of things. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a push for me to learn more about Adobe InDesign. That's the program I'm gonna use to lay it out. And I'm gonna do all of this myself. And then uh, also do the cover art. And that's another reason why I'm learning the watercolor. I think I want to do some sort of watercolor painting for the cover art. I don't know, we're just gonna see. I'm just gonna like let this, let this go and you know, hopefully it'll all come together. And if it doesn't, then you know, later on in the summer, if I have to, I can hire somebody for help. But I'm, I'm really excited about taking all of this on. And you know, it, it is the word of the year. Challenge is my word of the year. So why not take on the challenge and just try? So this week, James and I took off and went to the beach. And we went down to Charleston, South Carolina, where my sisters live and hung out with them and went to the beach and just had a blast. It was really, really fun. And I think it's really good to go on trips, you know, just like one-on-one -on -one with your kids. Uh, Josh will sometimes take James and go on little trips with him. He's done that since James was really little, since he was like three. They would go up to Chimney Rock and hang out and go to restaurants and spend the night and, you know, different things like that. So I think it's great. And this is the second time. Uh, last year we did this in June too. It was really bad because I was covered in chigger bites going to Charleston last this time last year. And I didn't know that it was chigger bites. I thought it was just really bad mosquito bites. <laughs> so yeah, I was educated on that in July last year and I will never get chigger, chigger bites again. They were awful. So thankfully wasn't dealing with that horribleness this time around. Uh, had a great time and you know like I said I did lots and lots of crochet while I was there because I just find it so relaxing right now and enjoyed time with my sisters and their kids my nieces and nephew yeah and it was just it was just so chill and it was so good to get away but on the way home I was really excited to get home and I you know I had, when I left I had been kind of feeling tired and just a little um, just a little overwhelmed and on the way home I was just feeling really fired up and ready to get back and you know ready to get to work and you know for me that just strikes home more than anything else the joy of building a life that you don't really want a vacation from I mean I can get tired and get a little cranky and a little overwhelmed at times but I'm you know, once I have that little bit of a break, I'm excited about getting home. And I love being home and hanging out with Josh and working together and, you know, just trying to, you know, build this business and, and do the best that we can. And I really think there's something to that. And I, you know, I've, I've heard other kind of self-help gurus and stuff like that talk about, you know, building the life that you don't want a vacation from. And I, I really think that there's something to that. And, you know, I was just feeling really uh, thankful for that. And that really tied in a lot to last week's post. And I gotta say, thank you guys so much for all your sweet comments. And uh, just heard from a lot of quilters last week about that. It was my post about uh, my cup runneth over and kind of that goddess quilt story. And I'll be honest, it is really, really scary <laughs> to be so open and to share uh, some of this. And, you know, and I know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, some of my quilts um, are very dark. They are very about very dark, very personal things. And, and it's scary sometimes to share this and put it out there. Um, but when I know that I'm helping someone else, 
that really makes it a lot easier. And so when I hear from you and you're kind of rooting me on and saying, thank you for that, that really makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing and that it's worth being so open and so honest uh, and sharing from the heart, you know? I mean, um, I think it's so easy to try and, I don't know, put up a facade, I guess is the best way of saying it, you know, to put up that kind of fake veneer of, you know, uh, everything is great and, you know, I'm so happy and you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, it's harder to be honest and say like, you know, today I just don't have the energy to share a goddess quilt today and I don't have the energy to share a debate and I don't have a, you know, a recording with, you know, I'm not doing interviews right now because I'm taking a break on that. So uh, it's hard to be honest, but at the same time, uh, if you're wanting to build a life that better reflects you, then being honest is the only thing that we can do that honestly makes the most sense. <laughs> if you really think about it, that does actually make the most sense. Uh, yeah, so I was just feeling really, really good. And I was feeling especially good because I uh, went to the beach, put on a swimsuit, and for the first time in my life, I did not feel extremely uh, uncomfortable and embarrassed about my body. That I've been on Whole30 and I've kind of worked Whole30 more or less into my diet, into my lifestyle. And I love the way my body looks now. I really, really do. And, I, you know, I just felt happy and healthy and really proud of myself because it's not been easy. You know, I, um, I stopped drinking. I, I shared this last uh, winter. I stopped drinking a year ago, more than a year ago now, uh, January, 2016, stopped drinking. And then this January, I decided to stop eating sugar. And I'll be honest, you know, yes, has sugar passed my lips? Yes, a few times. You know, I've had dessert here and there, um, but I have cut it out from being that thing, that habit, you know, every evening having a chocolate bar, you know, every time I had a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, having a teaspoon of sugar in that uh, beverage. And, uh, you know, my addiction to sweetbreads, you know, blueberry muffins and um, carrot cake and uh, pumpkin bread and all of those. You know, I've really curbed up on the habits that I had with sugar and sweet foods. And now I no longer feel like it's no longer attached to how I feel about myself. Like, oh, I've had a good day. I deserve to have a cookie, you know, something like that. It's no longer attached to my self-worth, um, my, you know, how I treat myself. Instead, you know, I come in the kitchen, it's like, oh, wow, you know, I get to make a phenomenal salad and feel great. And I would never have thought like, wow, Leah, really? Making a salad makes you feel good? Uh, I know what my <laughs> even 30-year-old self would have said to that. Uh, and all I can say is it's just the difference of, you know, making these choices and feeling so much better. And then being able to, when I am not feeling well, being able to identify what food is bugging my body. So I started having like bad stomach aches, um, like a week before we left for Charleston and I couldn't figure it out. Like, oh, is, you know, coffee all of a sudden a problem for me? And I really like my cup of coffee. Uh, and I was, I had, uh, kind of cheated a little bit on Whole30, you know, I was allowing cream like half and half and, uh, putting that in my coffee. And so I, uh, when I was in Charleston, my stomach stopped hurting completely and I was drinking coffee every day, sometimes like three cups a day. <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to curb up on that just a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I was like, okay, well, clearly it's not the coffee. It's got to be something else. And when I came home, I made another cup of tea or coffee and my stomach started hurting again. Like, what is it? Turns out the half and half we had in the house had gone bad, you know? And only because... I'm eating, you know, kind of such a limited amount of stuff and I know what my body can handle and what it can't. It was really easy to identify that. And so, yeah, I just think that's really cool. It's also really a valuable thing, you know, and I don't feel chained to sugar anymore. And that feels excellent as well. So that was a big challenge for this year and it still continues to be a challenge. And I don't know what it is about the summertime, but I feel like there's just so much more sugar 
around all the time in the summer versus the rest of the year. Maybe, I mean, I know it'll be an issue probably when we get back around in December and holiday baking and that whole nine yards. But um, dad made a uh, banana pudding. Dad makes phenomenal banana pudding. I mean, this is, it's absolutely awesome. So I ate a little bit, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to have just a little bit, you know, kind of get it out of my system. You know, at this point, I'm like, if I really want dessert, I can eat dessert. That's fine. But I just don't want to feel um, kind of manic about it the same way that I used to. So, but the, the issue that I have, like, I'm fine when everybody's cutting a slice of cake, you know, or something like that at the table. You know, I usually, you know, I can kind of decide if I want to have a little bit or not. But it's whenever I like open the refrigerator door and there's a banana pudding <laughs> in the fridge and I wasn't expecting to see it, you know, and it's kind of like that, that urge to have a bite or, you know, grab a spoon or something like that is right there. That's what I still need to work on just a little bit because that is definitely something that kind of, it's a little upsetting. <laughs> so I need to work on that just a bit. So that's really, you know, it was just one of those things where it was just nice to feel pretty in a swimsuit and uh, it was especially nice to feel like even you know with some sugary stuff all around me uh, you know I could make that decision whether I wanted to eat it or not and then even now you know I'm kind of bargaining a little bit with James because he loves to make blueberry muffins in the summertime he learned how to do that last year while I was working on another book and I, I kind of negotiated with him <laughs> this week. I said, okay, I really don't want blueberry muffins in the house right now. Could we negotiate and maybe like, you know, you have a bag of um, semi-sweet chocolate chips instead. So he took that bargain. And so far, I haven't found too many semi-sweet chocolate chips on the floor, but a few. So we had a little chat about, you know, put it in a bowl, you know, uh, keep it clean, that kind of thing. So... I think he's having a good summer. We're giving him a little bit of work to do every day, a little bit of schoolwork just to kind of keep his brain activated uh, and kind of still in, you know, I'm kind of mostly just brushing up on the, the math that he had a little bit of trouble with over the, you know, over the school year and kind of keeping that in mind just so whenever you go back to school, you're not just completely on a brain freeze. I can remember that, you know, going back to school and it was just like, oh man, what happened to my brain? You know, it's just not working and I can't think. And, you know, I just, you know, I just, it would take weeks to really get my head back in gear. And um, I'm really wanting to help James with that because he's starting middle school next year. And that is where the game really starts to change. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I remember that's when everything started to change in all kinds of different ways. And having your brain go on vacation is probably not the most convenient thing to be dealing with on top of all of that. So yeah, so we are having a great start to the summer. And I'm really excited about working on Mally the Maker every day and filming videos every day. And yeah, just, you know, I enjoy being able to share this side of my life with you. Uh, now our quilt along that we're doing, we're doing a little mini quilt along this summer. And that is Eternal Love. And I just shared the next video, the second video for it. And we put together the goddess quilt and fused uh, her body together. Now I admit, I had a complete catastrophe on this quilt. I wasn't fused tacking long enough and she kind of fell apart <laughs> whenever I flipped her over. Uh, so yeah, you'll want to check out this video because, you know, I think it's really important to show not just, you know, how to do something perfectly where everything works out just exactly the way you want it to, but also to show how you deal with something when it's not working out exactly the way you want it to. And that was definitely a situation where I kind of just had to, you know, fiddle and play and keep working with it until uh, I got the quilt back together again and working and explain why the problem happened. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I, I think the video turned out good. It is very long, mostly because I really wanted to show the step-by-step -step of how to put the pieces together. If you don't need that much detail, just fast forward through it. You know, it's on YouTube. You can just click the little slider and keep on going. Um, 
It's always a little frustrating whenever I look at my like video retention analytics. This is stuff that's kind of the back room of YouTube and um, most videos, you know, don't get watched all the way through. And, and it's kind of like, wow, I guess I could have stopped that video at, you know, the halfway point. I didn't need to share the whole thing because, you know, most people watching aren't getting through the entire video. Um, but I really like to be able to share and show the detail, you know, and to go into as much detail as I feel like the project needs. And especially with this, you know, this is my first fusible applique quilt that I've shared in years. And I really felt like it needed that. And so I hope that you'll watch the video and check it out and see how she came together and kind of the, the learning that went on even for me as we went through it. Uh, I do think that some of the issue might have even been the fusible web that I think I might have pulled some older pieces when I printed out that version because it stuck together so much better for the version that it did with Quilty Box. And that was sitting at my dining room table. Like I didn't even have an iron. I wasn't fuse tacking at all. Um, but then I was also being a lot more rough with the one that I was doing. I mean, because I kept flipping her over to show you what it looked like and then flipping it back. So yeah, yeah, it could have been any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, applique is kind of one of those delicate things. You really can't be too hard on it or it really starts to just kind of fall apart a little bit. So that was a good video. And today I'm gonna go out to the crafty cottage and film the blanket stitching video uh, to teach that and then start shooting the quilting videos to guide you through quilting her as well. So this quilt along will run until the beginning of July. So you still have plenty of time to join in. And of course you can join in anytime after it's up too, because the videos stay on, on the online forever. All you need to join in is just have a copy of the Eternal Love Quilt Pattern. And you can find that at leahday.com slash eternal love. And don't forget, please use the coupon code podcast and you'll save 10% on your order. So I hope that you'll join in the fun of the Eternal Love Quilt Along and come and check that out. It's been a lot of fun to share a fusible applique. But this isn't the only form of applique that I use for quilting. And so I've been thinking about that too, um, you know, trying to come up with more tutorials or just um, more patterns with the different forms of applique that I like to use. And it's hard because it is really, really time consuming. And the level of detail that has to go into these patterns, it's a lot. And, you know, and it's, it's just really time consuming to create and it's really time consuming to write and kind of figure out every single detail. And that's a large reason why I never wrote the quilt pattern for another goddess quilt called Express Your Love. And that was the quilt that we did a quilt along for an entire year for 2013. And I actually pulled this quilt. It's no longer available as a quilt pattern because all I ever offered was a master pattern, which is basically just a line drawing. And there's a piece of me that I really do want to go back in and write up an actual write an actual pattern for it. But I'm at the point where I'm kind of like, I don't even know how <laughs> that quilt and that whole project just got so overwhelming and huge. And I did multiple different versions of that quilt with multiple different styles of applique and traplique and foundation piecing and paper piecing and all kinds of just different crazy stuff and whole cloth quilting. I mean, it was just all over the place. So I don't even know where to start with that. Um, and I don't know, I, you know, I, 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 every once in a while I stop and think about it and like, how can I get, a, you know, express your love out of jail? That's where it feels like she is. It feels like she's in jail. And I'm going to try and figure that out within the next month or so, try and figure out how to get her out of jail write something, even if it's something very simple, pull those videos together so that they make some sense because they were all out of order when I posted them. You know, it was one of those things. 2013, I was still very much learning how to do a quilt along, learning how to make it make sense. Uh, I definitely learned my lesson of what not to do that year. <laughs> and, uh, and I've never done anything like that since, which is really good. I do actually learn, you know, from my mistakes. But, you know, that was one of the quilts that I just feel like has kind of gotten lost. And I like to figure out a way of fixing it, bringing her back and, 
Yeah, just just being able to tap into that. And I think I need to fall back on my word of the year and that is, you know, challenge and figure out, pull all those quotes out and take on that challenge of simplifying, breaking it down, you know, and even if it, you know, some of these quotes are not finished and I you know, don't really have, you know, an idea of how much time or energy they would take to finish, but they're certainly not going to get finished staying stuck in a drawer, you know, where they're hidden and I can't see them and I'm kind of ignoring that they're there. <laughs> so yeah, they're definitely not going to get finished if I leave them there. So I need to do something about that and make a plan to get them done. So I'll share more about that as I work on that throughout the summer. And another thing that I am working on is a charity quilt. And I'll be sharing a video on quilting that charity quilt probably later this month or in July um, that I recently joined a quilt guild in my local area. And this is the first time I've been a part of a guild in several years. I just, I just haven't had a lot of time. And then I didn't want to be kind of a moocher member of a guild, you know, where I was a member but not really participating in anything. Um, and, you know, in previous guilds that I've been part of, I was, you know, I was on the board and an active member. And I just, I just really don't, I don't feel like I can commit to that much. So kind of how I rationalized it is um, I can make some charity quotes. I do have time for that. And I can be an active member by making a lot of charity quotes. So that's what I'm going to do and picked up a little, they had like a little pre-cut kit all ready to go. I thought that was awesome. Uh, so I grabbed that kit, I'm gonna piece it together and then put it on the long arm and just share a really quick long arm design that you know will effectively hold the layers together and get the quilt done so it can be used, it can be enjoyed, you know, it serves the purpose, it'll hold up together really nicely, um, but it won't be super, super dense quilting. You know, you know, no quilt needs, especially bed quilts that need to be cuddly, they don't need that much quilting. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm thinking about doing a lot more charity quilt designing, um, looking at the sizes that most charity quilt, charity organizations need and designing specifically for that. Because, you know, I've been thinking a lot about how we keep quilting going, like how we pass quilting on to the next generation. And I always kind of just go back to my own story, like wh why did I become a quilter? Why did I get into this? And the reason I did is because I grew up with quilts on my bed. And it was a, a point of curiosity. How did those pieces come together? You know, how did someone make this thing? Uh, you know, how, how do all of those pieces fit? And, and how did someone cut out those shapes just exactly right? I was always curious about it, but I could never figure it out. It always seemed like a mystery to me. Uh, and so when I got older and I was getting married, that's when I really wanted to learn how to make a quilt. And that's when I kind of put my foot down. I was like, I'm gonna learn how to make a quilt this year. You know, I was turning 21 and I just really thought it was time for me to make a quilt. And I think, that bug get, you know, you get bitten by the bug at different times in your life. I've heard from a lot of quilters that got bitten by the bug when they had their first child and wanted to make a baby quilt. And I could definitely see how that is another point where we're, you know, kind of going through life and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I need to make a quilt and I need to figure that out quickly and, and make that. And the only way that that though, is an inspiration, you know, that we even know what a quilt is to want to make one is if we've had some sort of experience with it before, meaning that we've maybe slept under a quilt at some point in our lives, uh, seen a quilt, um, you know, had some sort of connection to it. So I think charities that are giving quilts to kids are doing that job, you know, that are connect, they are connecting kids with quilts and, giving them that, you know, that connection. And, you know, without that, you know, kid might never see a quilt before. So yeah, I, uh, I'm really excited about that and playing with charity quilts and doing more on that side. And I, I think it's always a good thing to give back. And uh, maybe that came out a little bit of my cup runneth over and sharing about gratitude, just, you know, feeling gracious and thankful for all that we have. And then that in turn, I don't know, I think it makes, it makes me at least feel just so lucky 
and and blessed and I want to I want to pass that on I want other people to learn about quilting and to get into it and I really want kids to make quilts too and uh, it was really funny after James finished Mally the Maker he came to me and said mom if that that book has been making me think about my quilt that I started two years ago could we pull it out and work on it together and I was like Yes, of course. <laughs> that always made me cry because, you know, he, I didn't want to push it on him, but he had started that quilt and we stitched on it together a little bit and I had made him hand stitch that quilt. Uh, and then, you know, gave it and let him use a machine for a little bit. But for the most part, most of the pieces are already put together with hand stitching, not with mach machine stitching. And uh, so now it's like all the pieces are in rows and he just needs to take the rows and connect them together. So yeah, it's like, okay, we'll go out to the crafty cottage and stitch those rows together and be able to finish it up. But uh, I almost felt a little um, like happy about Mally. It made me even happier about Mally because that's kind of the purpose of the book is to kind of... I don't know, inspire that that drive to go touch a sewing machine or to go grab needle and thread and to work with fiber and fabric. And that that lets me know that it's it's hitting the mark, at least with my kid. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but it's at least hitting the mark with James. So that was awesome. So that's pretty much it for the updates around the house and what's going on this week. Um, like I said, it was just a really good vacation. I uh, felt great and came back home fired up and ready to go. Uh, it's just taken me a little bit, you know, of time to get kind of back on track this week and, um, you know, focused on what I'm going to share next week, which I think will definitely be another goddess quilt story. And then, uh, yeah, I did want to say thank you guys so much for your response to the 365 Free Motion Quilting Designs calendar. Uh, yeah, we started a pre-order for that last week and had a great response. So this is a little uh, perpetual calendar. Uh, it has all the 365 quilting designs from my book from the very beginning of the Free Motion Quilting Project. And it's a perpetual calendar so that you can flip it and use it year after year because it just has the day of the month, like January 1st or July 13th or something like that. It doesn't have the day of the week, which would make it 2017 or 2018 or that kind of thing. So yeah, and the really funny thing is a lot of people have been buying two, one for themselves and one for a friend. And I didn't even think of that, but uh, you know, once one, you know, people started, um, quilters started adding a little comment to their order. Like, this isn't a mistake. I'm buying one for a friend. It's like, yeah, that actually does make sense. That's a pretty good gift. So that made me feel really good. So yeah, I really appreciate that. And we are doing a dollar off. So you get a good deal from us. And then I'm signing all of the calendars too. And this is a pre-order. So they're going to ship on or around July 10th from us. So if you want to come and check that out, you can find it at leahday.com slash 365 calendar. So that's it for the updates around the house. I really enjoy sharing this podcast with you every week, and I hope that you're enjoying it too. Uh, if you'd like to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, that of course helps us out a lot. And of course, it always helps when you share it with your friends. So you can find more podcast episodes at leahday.com slash podcast. And next week, I'll be back with a story about a goddess quilt called Torrent of Fear. And it's all about overcoming fear in your life and not letting that stop you from doing the things that you want to do more than anything else. So I hope that you'll join me for that episode coming up next week. Until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>